laborers are such an important part of that harvest. And so Jesus took this very practical situation in the area in which he was raised, and he told a story that has a spiritual impact and a spiritual meaning that's even important to those of us today. He said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And when he agreed with the laborers for a denarius for the day, he sent them into his vineyard. Now, this word denarius, we need to talk about that for just a second, is simply a day's wage. It's simply a day's wage. Whatever the average day's wage was at that day in that time, that's what, that's what was provided by the landowner for the workers at that, in that day. In verse 3, and he went out about the, the third hour. Well, first of all, I, I should back up. Let me back up. And he said uh, he went out early in the morning. That was around 6 o'clock. Uh, this is a long work day. <laughs> it, it starts at 6 in the morning, and it goes to 6 in the evening. Okay, And so this man went out very early in the morning because these workers would come, and they would gather in the marketplace and then in hopes that some landowner would come and hire them for that particular day. That's not uncommon even in this day in which we live. I can show you places in Grand Junction, and you can probably show me places here in town where people gather looking for work for the day. That's what's being described right here. Well, he went out again, according to the third verse, about the third hour, which is uh, he went out at 9 o'clock, first went out at 6, and he came back at 9, and he saw others that were standing idle in the marketplace. And to those he said, You too go into the vineyard. And whatever is right, I will give you. And so they went. So see, he didn't promise them anything. He said, I'll make it right. What was the right amount? I will provide for you. And again, he went out about noon or the sixth hour. And again, at three o'clock in the afternoon or the ninth hour. And he did the same thing. And then about the eleventh hour, he went out and he found others that were standing. And he said to them, why have you been standing here all day long? And they said, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you too go into the vineyard. And when the evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last group to the first. Now see, this is kind of different. He, he pulls a switch here, doesn't he? He starts paying those who went out at 5 o'clock. They worked only one hour, okay? And, and work your way back, he said, to those I hired very early in the morning at the 6 o'clock hour. And um, when those he'd hired about the 11th hour came, each one received a denarius. And when those hired at first came, they thought that they would receive more. And they also received each one a day's wage or a denarius. And when they received it, they grumbled at the landowner saying, these last men have worked only one hour and you've made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the scorching heat of the day. But he answered and said one, uh, to one of them, My friend, I am doing to you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a Daenerys? And that, if you go back, you'll see that's exactly what took place in, the, in verses 1 and 2 as he hired those early in the day. In verse 14, Take what is yours and go your way. But if I wish to give... To this last man the same as to you, is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with what is my own? Or is your eye envious because I am generous? What a beautiful story. What a beautiful story from God's word. And you can sum it all up in that one word, grace. It's all about grace. Some words that he talks to uh, talks about here in this passage that I want us to, to mention. We've already talked about the labors and how vital they were to the harvest. Because if, if the grapes stayed on the vines too long, in that part of the world, the rainy season came. And when the rainy season came, it became very difficult then to harvest the crop that the landowner and those workers had worked so hard to get to the point where it was ready for the harvest. And so it's critical to find the right number of workers at just the right time. And these men knew that, and that's why they went to the marketplace, hopefully to find work 
for that particular day. I like what he said in verse 12. It has a real spiritual meaning as well, does it not? These last men have worked only one hour, and you've made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of this and the scorching heat of the day. Equality. Isn't that what Jesus is all about? You know, if you look at the, the religion of the Jews, it was a hierarchical type religion with the scribes and the Pharisees and the high priests and all the leaders of the Jewish people. It was not based on equality. And so when Jesus started talking about equality, this is something that really touched the hearts of people around about him. You see, it really doesn't matter whether you're Native American, whether you're Chinese, whether you're Japanese, whether you're Korean, whether you're African American, or someone from, from Africa, it doesn't matter whether you're Anglo, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, it doesn't matter where you were born or what nationality you were, in Jesus Christ we're all equal. You see, we stand on equal ground at the foot of the cross. You've heard that said. That is a reality, a spiritual reality that Jesus brought forward. And that was something that really touched heartstrings in that day and time, just like it does today. Because just like it is today, that things aren't always equal in society, in that day and time they were not equal in society either. In that day and time, there were many people who were servants. As you read some of the stories from the gospel and, and about the servants in the household, some were the menial servants that had literally to wash the feet of the strangers who came to visit, who came in the door. And as they took off their sandals and they washed their feet. But what Jesus is saying is those people are equal to the same scribes and Pharisees, the Jewish leaders of that day and time. As far as God's concerned, people are equal. They're on the same plane. All men, all women have value. And that brings us to the second subject. In that day and time, the woman was not equal with the man either as far as spiritual things. If you look at the Jewish religion, you'll find there were certain places in the temple that only the men could go. The women were not privileged to go there in that day and time. They were not equal when it came to worship. They were not equal when it came to the types of service that they could do for the Lord. But in Jesus Christ, men and women of all races, all nationalities, all stand on equal ground at the foot of the cross. We all need him, do we not? We need him as our Lord and as our Savior. We need him in our life regardless of our background, regardless of who we were, regardless of how people look at us in this society today or how they looked at people in that society in that day, when it comes to relating to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, all people are equal. And that's why Jesus went to the extreme that he did in this story. I mean, it seems to you like uh, you and I perhaps is, is kind of a strange story. You know, we, we look at it maybe from the standpoint of those who were hired at at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, do we not? Gee, we've been in the church a long time. We were those who were the founding fathers of the church. Do we not deserve better things than those who just joined the church recently, just came to faith in Christ? See, it has practical implication to our world today, does it not? Some people in some churches, not in this church, I'm sure, but in a lot of churches would say, well, <clears throat> man, I've been a deacon in this church or an elder or I've been the pastor for 25 years, you know. Does that not mean that I should have some special blessing in my life? When it comes to salvation, the answer to that is no. <laughs> We're all on equal ground. We're all on equal ground. All in need of what Jesus did that uh, a week from this coming Friday that when we celebrate Good Friday, we're going to take a close look at that, are we not? We're going to reflect on that. I hope that you'll invite people to come to see the Jesus film. Um, I've spent hours viewing the Jesus film in Spanish, in Aymara, in English, uh, different places in the world. 
We've shown the film by taking a Jeep and putting the screen up on top of the Jeep and taking a power generator and a video projector and showing that film in the dusty streets of El Alto, a town of 850,000 people, most of whom did not know Christ. And I've watched people. I've watched people over that two-hour period of time be drawn by God's Holy Spirit to Himself and commit their lives.